Thomas Polisky, and in this video, I'll be showing how to use the input and output features with the HipBot robot. First, I'm gonna show how to actually set up the electronics so you can receive the signals. Uh, we had to buy these cables externally, and as of right now, you will have to as well, but we'll post a link to where you can get them. Um, it's a standard 15 pin connector with a breakout terminal uh, for the pins. Uh, starting with the output, this is the output terminal. This is the input terminal. Connect that to the robot here. And then for the input, connect that to the robot as well. In order to use the outputs, you have to connect a 4.7K resistor between pin 10 and the COM port for the set of three outputs that you're using. Pin 10 is an internal power supply pin, and pin 5 relates to common A, which controls outputs 0, 1, and 2, which relate to pins 8, 7, and 6. If we want to connect a solenoid to the output, We'd have to connect the wires to the output of our choice. So if we want to use out zero, that would be pin eight. And then the other wire connects to pin nine, which is the internal 24 volt power supply. Since this is a 24 volt device. We have to do something very similar for the inputs. We have to connect the internal power supply pin, which is pin 14 for the inputs, to our common for the input signals. Com A is pin four, which relates to input zero, one, and two. To receive the input signal, in this case, a screw feeder, we'll have to connect pin 15, the internal 24 volt power supply pin, to our input of choice. Here I've connected to pin two, which relates to input one. After we set up the wiring for the inputs and outputs, uh, there are things that need to be done in the software so you can actually control them and read the signals. So as you can see, input one is colored red, and that's because a screw is present in the screw feeder. If I turn off the screw feeder, The signal is now green, which means it's not reading anything. But if I turn it back on, that signal's there again. This is useful if you are doing a screwing application and you want to make sure a screw is present before you actually go to pick it up. Now, conversely, for the output side, you can either manually set an output to turn on. So now our solenoid's on. Uh, or you can turn it off. Uh, what you would typically do is just right click on this output node, select out equals one to turn it on and add the signal. Then in a second output node, you would have that signal set to zero to turn it off. Now, in order to do things with the input signal, you can give it a name. And then in a conditional statement, you can add a condition. So now uh, this path is only going to be uh, passed through if the signal is equal to one. And right now it is. So if I run this, It works. Now, if I turn off the screw feeder while it's running, it stops. And then if I turn it back on, it should continue. 